Okay, lovelies. I've got a bit of a bee in my bonnet. <laughs> Excuse the pun. But I have a, bee, a bit of a bee in my bonnet. And um, what's happened is that the dark goddesses have been um, very vocal this week. They've been giving me a bit of what for. And they've asked me to make a video and talk a little bit about something that is really quite significantly important to all of us, but especially the women out there, my sisters. So I have had this song in my head, and that's usually a sign that something is going on. It's the first thing that comes is the song. And the song was Rod Stewart, and it's um, the, the lyric that was particularly outstanding was the big bosomed um, lady with a Dutch accent. And it, it was the big bosomed that, that was really giving me uh, you know, cause for pause because um, I had to go and have a, a mammogram done this week and, you know, results pending. And it was once again this reluctance to look after myself that we as women feel so keenly. And I was giving it some thought. I was trying to figure out what, what the dark goddesses, what the, what the goddesses were trying to tell me. What exactly was it in me that was shadowed behavior, fear behavior. And if you're a woman and you've ever had a mammogram, you know how damned uncomfortable they are. And it is quite tough to bring up the courage to go because it's Russian roulette. You hope that nothing will be found. And then if something is found, it is quite disconcerting and frightening. The process of being processed by the NHS if something is found is almost inhuman and this is not an indictment of staff it is the policies that are shaping the way that the professionals are dealing with us and quite frankly the policies are written by men who don't know what the fear places are that we have as women and they're certainly very scientific and very professional but they're certainly not gentle and having something done to our breasts and I will say that as far as I'm concerned the prevailing method of curing breast cancer is mastectomy that means the cutting off of one's breasts unwomaning a person is so vile is such butchery that it is no wonder that the women don't want to come forward to to have that done to volunteer to have their body butchered I know that there must be an easier way. I know that there must be a better way. I hear all the time in the hospitals of new ways of creating a healing regime for cancer. Just yesterday, there was a report issued that a gentleman, I can't remember, I think it was Canada, had found a way to use sonic, the sonic boom or the sonic sound of the healthy cells reverberating back into the unhealthy cells and exploding them and by that removing tumors and this is something that is already having been going has has already gone through a process of of testing but we all know what's going to happen we all know the big pharma isn't going to allow that to happen because it will take away their income stream and so this will be so far and few between that not everybody will be helped. Not half the people will be helped, but only the top 10% will be helped. And it is always thus. The less money you have, the harder it is on your body. So I was talking about this to some of my students. And one of the things about, especially the Dark Goddess course that I'm teaching at the moment, and yes, I will mention it, is this this rebel yell of women, this stepping up together of women, this holding each other up. Because when we have a issue with breast health, and it was funny yesterday, it was actually a doctor, a female doctor that saw me. And you could tell the difference between the way that she was looking after me. It was all women, actually, the radiographer, everybody. The way that they were looking after me, because they have breasts themselves, they know how uncomfortable it is when somebody pushes and shoves on your on your breasts. It it was just so much more gentle, so much more loving, so much more caring, the way that I was treated. 
and I was um, this morning woken up at five o'clock by Hecate, um, the maiden, the justice warrior, and she was putting into my head this idea of making this video and saying to women, will you treat your breasts more kindly? For the longest time, I have seen my breasts as the enemy. I have seen this life-giving part of my body, organ of my body, as the enemy. Because it is a time bomb as far as people are concerned. How many women now die of breast cancer and secondary cancer caused by breast cancer? The statistics will tell you that actually the occurrences might be going down or a lot more women are cured. But you have to remember um, the saying, lies, damn lies and statistics. Yeah, I see still far too many women being treated like just so much of a piece of meat. And when we don't honour our breasts, when we don't honour our femininity, then maybe, just maybe, we don't say no often enough. Or we don't say, is there another way often enough? We don't give the rebel yell often enough. Because the male doctors, mostly the male doctors, the, uh, we call them scalpel jockeys, the surgeons will tell you the more and the quicker we remove, the better, because it will save your life. And yet I have seen other sisters who have had alternative treatments that have survived and thrived. I'm, and these are within the NHS. I, I'm not talking about alternative medicine. So, but how can we prepare or how can we um, maybe help our breasts stay healthy? So one of the things that I want to introduce you to is your own sacred touch. You know, I am a woman of a certain age. Me talking about my breasts will probably turn somebody's stomach. <laughs> makes me quite laugh. <laughs> makes me laugh. But it may well be that people will, for heaven's sake, don't talk about that. Because usually the women, the sacred women, the, special, the spiritual women that talk about, you know, your breasts or your womb or something, are women in their, in their rightness, in their, you know, the, 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 the perky boobed women. Nobody wants to talk about the women of a certain age and their breasts because then they became this useless sacks of flabby meat. That's what people do say to themselves and their breasts. And you wonder why the breasts get a bit narky. Yeah. So here's my question. How often do you touch your breasts? Probably every time you go in the shower, you probably give them a good scrub, especially underneath because, you know, at our age, things are saggy and you need to clean down there. Otherwise, there's trouble. And then I ask you, how often do you touch your breasts in a sacred way? How often do you anoint your breasts? How often do you give your breasts loving kindness? How often do you speak to the cells in your breasts? How often do you actually go ahead and caress yourself? Touch yourself with a loving touch, not sexually necessarily, although if that's thing, a thing, do it. But it really is an important part of our self-care, is that honouring, loving and witnessing our breasts, because they are a sentient part of our body. And if we talk trash to them, yeah, then why should they stay healthy? How can they stay healthy? If we treat them like the enemy, if we hate them because they are a little bit come uncomfortable, there may be breast pain, there may be, you know, itchiness, there may be swelling, and it doesn't always have to be cancer. It can be all sorts of hormonal imbalances. So what people don't talk about is the discomfort of growing your breasts as a young woman. That's very often shoved under the table. You know, they just turn up. Or do they? And the discomfort of changes post-menopause. The discomfort that we feel in our breasts. And even if we go and see a GP, even if we go and see a doctor, it is a very clinical way 
yes, they're fine, or no, you have to go and see somebody and have them checked. They become purely um, a spare part. A spare part. You don't really need them once you're postmenopausal. There's no use for them. You're no longer feeding children, if you ever did. I want to rouse all the menopausal women. I want to rouse all the postmenopausal women. I want to rouse the queens and the crones to say, hang on a minute. That is a very sacred part of mine. And I want to give that part some love. I want to shake my maracas. I want to move myself, feel the movement of my heavy breasts, of my beautiful breasts. There is still life in me. As long as I breathe, there's life, and they are a part of my life. So this is what I wanted to talk to you about today, is how to honour that part of your body. And then maybe asking yourself, how are you treating your body generally? Are you ignoring its plight? Are you ignoring its need for good sustenance? I'm not here to preach to you. I'm one of the worst people for it. I mean, honestly, the amount of times I say to myself, B, put that damn biscuit down, because you know sugar feeds cancer. And yet, there is a part of me that really wants that biscuit and knows that it's not good for me. So I'm not listening to my body. There are days when I'm saying to my body, okay, I understand this is not good for you, but my heart and my soul needs a biscuit right now. How can the goddess help us? Well, they signpost. They signpost us to the part of us that needs healing. They signpost us to the part of us that needs some attention, some loving attention. They poke us. They send us symbols. They send us synchronicities. And sometimes they send us songs. So I would like to invite you to learn more about how you can honour yourself. How you can become a devotee of your own inner temple, your body, so that your soul, that part of you that is carried by your body as a sacred part of you, how that can work together in beautiful unison, in beautiful harmony. Give yourself time. Give yourself comfort. Give yourself gifts of pampering. Don't treat your breasts like the enemy until it is too late and you may lose them. On this note, I wish you the very best and I hope that you follow some of my um, offerings and that you realise how beautiful and how sacred you are no matter what age. Blessed be.